From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Builders Warehouse opened its latest store in Boxburg in April. The new 15,170 square metre box format store design entailed a new layout and look and feel to align with Builders' digitalization and cutter-driven strategy. Marlene Arnoldi attended the opening. The new store has replaced the adjacent former Boxburg store and now offers a premium hardware retail experience through a combination of online integration, departmental adjacencies and new services that deliver seamless shopping for contractors, building professionals and DIY customers. CEO Llewellyn Walters tells us more about the three-dimensional printing offering in particular. The 3D printing is actually not new. We've been trialling it in our Avonia store for a while. Um, obviously you've seen some customer demand around it. A um, lot, lot of school projects, people coming to you know, make particular objects, um, people looking to repair things. And so we've taken that functionality and we've brought it into this particular store and we're hoping that there'll be equal excitement and customer footprint. You know, so customers come for different journeys, so we're hoping the 3D printing will bring customers from a different perspective. Another unique feature in this store is the smart home section, which shows how smart devices can be linked in a home and where Builders offers advice on smart home solutions. Walter shares where the concept came from and how it benefits the customer. Smart home has been evolving for a while. Um, you know, it obviously started in the US um, with Alexa and more online grocery ordering. Um, it's come its way into sec uh, technology from a security point of view. So companies like Yale, who traditionally would have been in door locks, have ventured into sort of digital spaces, so digital door locks where you can open and close the door via your cell phone uh, from a connectivity point of view. So that's becoming fairly big. The technology is quite expensive initially, but you know we're looking to try and commoditize it and make it bigger and easier for the customer. So a lot of kits, uh, more how-tos, videos about installation, um, and ultimately it's a growing trend. Um, anywhere from security to remote access to turning on lights, through a master switch environment, um, to be able to manage your home, turn off your fridges, to um, turning off your irrigation system if there's been excessive rain um, and you don't want to waste water. So it's extending into many, many different areas. Um, I think it'll lead with security in our, in our space um, because it's obviously quite a pressing need. Compared with the old store, the new building runs between 30% and 40% cheaper and is more efficient in terms of energy and water. Walters explain how the building is rigged with eco-friendly initiatives. From a building design point of view, we've put a lot more lighting monitors into the front of the store, um, which allows a lot more lateral light to create more lux at the floor level. Um, we've obviously put heat reflective domes, which obviously diffuse light into the actual store itself, increasing the lux at the, at the floor level as well, therefore requiring less light um, from, a, from a lighting perspective. Also by using LED technology from a light point of view, We've been able to lower our, our footprint in terms of uh, consumption uh, from an electricity point of view. We've also put building management systems in place that effectively monitor the lux at floor level and monitor air conditioning. So during the day, um, as the sun comes up, more natural light comes into the store. So that actually turn off banks of light to create um, a more energy efficient uh, sort of usage in terms of utilities. Um, we've always harvested rainwater off, off our roofs um, for use in our garden centres. Um, but you know, we've obviously tried to increase uh, that functionality by putting um, it through a purification process as well that we can use it in our plant uh, garden centres, um, in our, our grey water service environments as well. So um, we've tried to look at how we obviously lessen our impact in terms of uh, the environment and how we make the stores more sustainable. The Builder store is filled with feedback systems and the company values customer input. Customer analytics was particularly used in aiding the look and feel of the store, which will also be rolled out in other stores in due course. Builder's marketing director Anton Stein tells us more about the data gathering and inspiration that went into creating the store. We tend to travel quite extensively and obviously in building digital platforms it gives us the opportunity to be a little bit more uh, creative than when you build a physical store. You, know, you can try something, see how customers respond, um, you know, iterate and, um, and try again. So a lot of it is based on um, customer research, a combination of, um, of interviews, but also in some of our customer data analytics. So we understand that our customers often um, find it frustrating um, if things aren't reliable. So a lot of the digital technology has been developed um, to eliminate those, those pay points. 
And then um, from a retail point of view, you know, retail is all about um, art and science. And I think the stores of the future will be not only um, high in tech, but also high in touch. So the more technology we, we put in in order to assist customers, the more they almost expect um, an individual experience. But the individual experience is not only um, enriched through data, but often also through texture and color and the way that we experience things. So it is a little bit of a combination of those. And then obviously um, traveling extensively. So we, we travel both to the States um, and, and to Europe frequently to look at mass merchants like ourselves. Um, but a lot of the opportunity in our own market is around the specialist categories. Um, we have some good competitors. I think the world's become a really small place uh, through the internet, so subscribing to some good digital newsletters from our industries and often outside of the industry is people are trying things all over the world and um, and you may as well try. Not, not everything that we, um, that we do will work, um, but it's certainly very exciting. Um, we'll measure what customers respond to best and do more of those. Other news making headlines. Defire unveils regional experience center to showcase latest technology. Home appliance manufacturer Defi intends to give both retailers and consumers an experience of its latest technologies and innovations at its recently unveiled Regional Experience Centre. Simone Litka gives us the details. The Regional Experience Centre, which hosts a museum documenting Defi's progress since 1993, was crafted based on the company's expansion needs and will assist in gearing up for the next decade. DeFi's regional marketing director tells us a bit more. The centre has been crafted based on understanding uh, our expansion needs, uh, both from a distribution uh, point of view, but also from a consumer perspective. From a distribution point of view, um, the company has grown over the last uh, 114 years. We're quite excited by that. And um, um, this comes with natural expansion, so we've had to gear up for the next 10 years by having a world-class distribution centre. Um, in addition to that, we've also crafted a consumer experience centre that contains all our latest innovations, and it's got a museum that shows products that we've made in 1933. And it's really intended to give both our retailers and consumers an experience of DeFi's latest technology. In speaking to Engineering News in April, he also highlights some of the products and technologies on show at the centre. We produce uh, nine different uh, categories or segments of products uh, in cooking, in laundry, in cooling, in microwave, uh, cooker hoods, and I can go on. So basically, uh, here in South Africa, we produce um, most of them. Uh, in terms of innovation in laundry, in April 2019, this month, we launched our new laundry technology called Steam Cure, and uh, that will be revolutionary and uh, really assist consumers in their fabric care and intensive cleaning. Uh, and we're unveiling that uh, in our new uh, showroom this morning, in fact. Uh, in dishwashers, we have a new corner washer system. And this is for intensive cleaning, reaching all parts of the, the drums to make sure that your dishes are uh, clean and uh, sparkling. In terms of cooling, we have a new technology called NeoCool, and that keeps your food fresh for longer. And then in cooking, we have, we've always had Thermofan, which was our brand shaper. And in June this year, we will launch Thermofan Plus, which means that when you're roasting and when you're baking, you have more smoother, even uh, cooking processes, which means that uh, the texture is much more succulent. He further tells Engineering News a little about the company's initiatives and projects that it has in place to increase DeFi's growth in sub-Saharan Africa, and touches on how the center speaks to this. So our expansion uh, plan throughout the sub-Saharan African countries uh, include uh, 34 countries and we have two brands, both Beko, which is our global brand, and DeFi. In all these 34 countries we have launched both DeFi and Beko. Um, from a product um, and technology perspective, a huge portion of our products produced in South Africa are exported into the sub-Saharan African region. So basically South Africa and Durban and Johannesburg become the hub to export into these countries. So we've had to gear up both in distribution, in product innovation and efficiency projects to make sure that we can effectively compete in the African region. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. Don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.